We are in front of this beautiful, beautiful GR Corolla. The GRola. The Grola. The girl. Okay. No, no, too much. Too much. We've been uh, hot and heavy, as some would say, with the GR brand, the new BRZ, the new GR86. Uh, you guys have seen many videos of us getting involved with those platforms, making more power, enjoying them, having fun. And this is uh, a new member of that family, released by Toyota. Thank you, Toyota, for bringing us a fun hatchback. We need more, so keep at it. And this car is built by our friends at AJ Racing. We've worked with AJ Racing in the past, tuning several of their cars, and uh, they've been kind enough to allow us to play with their beautiful, uh, look at those Advan wheels, uh, look at those brakes, look at the white GR Corolla. Now, the GR Corolla is a new platform, and we're using ECU Tech, AccuTech, to tune this vehicle and because it's a new platform it has some new platform teething paints and that means that the flashing which i'll show you in a second is not as straightforward as you are used to uh, with these flashing uh, ecu tools uh, but not too bad altogether um, and then of course it's also a discovery process we have to discover where the limits of um, what, the, what the table limits in the ECU are, uh, what the limits of how the turbo likes things done, of how the car responds, and all of that. So it is uh, relatively new. I know these have been in Europe, the Yaris name, uh, for some time with the same drivetrain. Uh, so those guys are a little bit ahead of what we got here in North America. But in any case, uh, there's power to be made, uh, there's fun to be had, and uh, this is kind of our introduction uh, to this car. We'll probably be seeing it again, but for now, it's just an intake only. Uh, otherwise, everything else is stock on the engine side, and we're trying to coax more juice, more fun, and uh, more power out of the little three-cylinder. Now, the flashing process in this car can seem a little daunting, so that's why I just wanted to show it to you. So here, if you come and uh, look at the engine bay, now it's got this beautiful Eventuri intake here that's, that's carbon, but right in behind it uh, is where you locate your stock ECU. The stock ECU has three plugs, and uh, these plugs need to come off for you to flash the car. So you just remove the, the clips and move them out of the way as such. You basically are sorta, kinda, bench flashing the ECU. And in order to do that, you need to use this specialty harness. That is actually, we can provide this for you, and uh, it is uh, made by the good people at AccuTech. So to hook this up is relatively straightforward once again. This one goes onto the furthermost plug on the ECU. Don't force anything, it just goes in there. And if you got it right, then it'll squeeze down when you apply the lock. Then this one looks like an OBD port. It is an OBD port. You plug the ECU dongle, AccuTech dongle into that. And of course, because we're not connected to the battery anymore, we have to give it uh, battery power. Now the Corolla has the battery in the trunk for weight distribution, so you can use that there, and then you can use a ground here. We use this, this bolt is pretty, pretty conveniently located there. Now you can also see that you have the ignition switch, which is now just this button. So you leave that off for a brief moment, and then you have your Pro ECU on your laptop. And if we were doing this remotely, we would be sending you guys a tune uh, and you'd have your own dongle here your usual vehicle interface here the evi here which is uh, often used for bluetooth communication and so on plug on the special harness and then you hit ignition on and at this point the ecu you can see that red lights on there the ecu is powered okay then you get the usual programming interface program ecu select the correct ROM, which it already has, 
here and then you hit program. And then you just follow the prompts here that you're very familiar with if you use Accutech before. So it just goes through a regular uh, programming cycle here. And it'll tell you to turn off the ignition. Once it's complete, cycle the key effectively and your flashing will be done. It's almost like Toyota knew people would be going through this process a lot because they made this ECU accessible from a physical standpoint. There you have it. So now your new tune is on your vehicle and we're just gonna go for a pull here and um, see what power she makes. Engine is off, handbrake is on. Turn the ignition switch on. Release the handbrake. Press the brake pedal and hold. Turn the engine on. Pull on the handbrake. Release the brake pedal and press two times and hold. One, two, release the handbrake, then pull two times and hold. One, two. Release the brake pedal and press two times and hold. One, two. Oh, there she be. There she be. Now we are in dyno mode. Now let's do some dynoing. pretty decent actually uh, we've got a nice fairly smooth power curve but we do have a little bit of surging that's happening down low I need to look over the, the data logs dial out this this little bit of surging that's a little bit too aggressive down low and we should be in a happy spot in terms of this uh, pump gas tune for this car so a bit of work to do and we'll show you guys the final results soon Day two. Day three. Day four. Welcome to what has been my office for the last few days. So we've definitely uh, uncovered a lot of interesting things about the CCU, about how to dial it in. And, and also this car is, is quite complex in terms of what it has for the ECU. And it is quite difficult, I would say, to dial in for uh, drivability. So I'll show you, I'm gonna drive the car. There's a lot to unpack here. So I'm gonna drive the car and I want you to pay attention to this boost gauge here because that's an indication of how well the tune is set up for drivability. You'll see that the boost comes in um, and, and it, it ramps up quickly and then it holds steady as I am applying throttle. Now, why I'm mentioning this is because this has been one of the most difficult things to, to actually dial in on the car. So I'm gonna put the dyno here in vehicle simulation mode, which means we got load uh, from our Mustang dyno. I know and just keep an eye on that on that boost gauge so as I'm ramping in you can hear the bypass valve letting go through the eventuri intake so just easing in you can see I'm can control boost with my foot I'm just giving it more and there it goes um, I'm not sure if this is coming across really well in the video but just this control of boost with your foot. I'm just leaning into the throttle right now and a bit more and boom, wide open, nice and steady. So this aspect of the tune, which is a hallmark of a quality tune, has been by far the most difficult to dial in so that you've got nice control of the throttle on the car. And here you go, just giving a bit more throttle, a bit more throttle, a bit more throttle, a bit more throttle, and finally wide open. You can see how nicely that boost correlates to my pedal position and that just pays dividends when you're taking this car to the track and when you're driving it around town. So we spent a lot of hours to make sure that our calibration, our understanding of the ECU allows us to do exactly that. And um, in terms of the power, first, 
uh, I'm going to show you guys what the car looked like stock and then what the car looked like with a pump gas tune. So this faint line here is the stock power and it made 283 horsepower and um, we bumped that up to just over 300 wheel horsepower. Now there's a couple of features that you can see that is a little bit bumpy on the stock tune and it's also a little bit bumpy on our uh, own calibration. With pump gas, you're going to have more knock sensor activity. It's inevitable, the, the fuel is a little bit more susceptible to knock. And this car, the way the ECU logic works, is that it adds timing until it hits a knock event, then it drops timing, and then it adds it again, hits knock, and, and so on. This is so it maximizes efficiency. The knock control system is very fast and very reactive in the car, and this way you maximize efficiency. It does it on the stock tune, and uh, on pump gas especially, it'll do it on an aftermarket tune as well. So you have to be cognizant of that and not, uh, not draw its ire too much. So in other words, not cause too much knock. It is normal for it to not to ride the knock threshold. After this, we threw in some E30 in the tank and that made a very nice improvement. So now the comparison is between E30 which is the dark line and the pump gas tune. And all of a sudden we jump from a 306, uh, 307 wheel horsepower to 349 wheel horsepower. And you can see that especially up top here, we're having a much smoother line. Uh, there are very few corrections, if any, in terms of the timing system. So the knock sensor is staying quiet um, because the, the res knock resistance of the fuel is much higher and we're able to make gains across the board with a smoother line. And just to show you the difference between an E30 tune and stock, there it is. So 65, uh, 66 wheel horsepower and about the same in wheel torque improvements over stock with just an intake and the E30 tune. So there's a substantial uh, meat on the bone in terms of tuning this car and the gains are not felt just in terms of peak performance but they're also felt in terms of consistency and repeatability and smoothness of the tune. So I'm really happy uh, to, to have uh, gotten a chance to, to dial this in. Uh, thanks again to guys at, uh, at AJ. They're going to be taking this car to the track. They're going to be driving on the street. And uh, we will for sure be seeing this car back to dial it in some more for more parts. The flashing procedure was a little bit cumbersome, as you saw, with the, the harness that's required of the ECU. However, um, Ecutech is actively working on having just an OBD only flashing solution, which means that we can get these tunes to you guys in a much more effective manner. And we're just going to take this car out now on the road and show you a little bit of on-road driving and as a final check of our calibrations. How does the car feel? Well, this is actually my first experience driving uh, drive the GR Corolla and it feels nice and substantial. There's a, there's a fat power band under you, under your right foot, and uh, the exhaust makes a very interesting... I, I, I really like the noise, actually, and the vibration from the, uh, the three-cylinder engine. Um, the gear shift is very positive. Excellent throttle control. Before you know it, you're going, you're going at at least five kilometers over the speed limit. And with the tuning here, it's uh, it's really nice and responsive. Ethanol does such wonderful things for uh, the performance of cars. Heel toe is pretty good, but yeah, this uh, this this is woken up. It's woken up properly, and all it took was a uh, was a tune, some E, and an intake. Feels lively. I know that the guys at AJ are going to be tracking this, and I'm very interested in how they'll enjoy it now with so much more power. Yeah, it's just...
power is there. Looking forward to seeing these cars get more built up and more mods, but even so, stock mods breathed on like this is just a ton of fun. So stay tuned for more. If you got any tuning questions regarding the GR uh, Corolla or Yaris, do get in touch with us. We, we have uh, the ability to tune these uh, cars locally, especially on our dyno here. Yes, absolutely, we have the harness. And very shortly, we're gonna have a way to be able to send you guys these tunes remotely and dial in your car with data logs that you send to us. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed.